Hey everyone, this is SM Pratt, and today we're going to talk about what cards you should buy. I received that question more than any other question. What cards should I buy? How much are my cards going to be worth? What will these cards be worth in three to five years? Basically, in this video, what I'm going to do is show you a range of product from conservative purchases to more speculative purchases, and I'm going to discuss the pros and cons of each category. So, beginning with the basics, literally, Let's take a look at the original 1999 base set booster pack. So something like this is going to be considered a very conservative purchase in the hobby. And when I say the word conservative, I also mean in demand, established value, etc. So a conservative item typically is that older, rare, mint or better uh, paradigm that I'm always subscribing to every, or prescribing to everyone. And basically, this card or this pack has so much potential because it could potentially contain the original base set Charizard. The original base set Charizard is essentially the rookie card of the hobby. It is one of the most popular cards, definitely the most popular set card by far. This card is literally in one of these packs. So this pack is the, it has so much historical value behind it, so much inertia. It's very, very difficult to find these compared to when they were released in 1999. It's been out of print for almost 20 years now. Therefore, this item is going to be a conservative purchase. Similar to any high-graded Watsy cards, this is a Shadowless Charizard. We are at a point now where finding a Shadowless, ungraded, even near-mint Charizard is difficult. A genuine near-mint, ungraded Shadowless Charizard is difficult to find on the open market. Therefore, you probably have fleshed out price points from PSA 5 to PSA 10. So something uh, like an older Watsy card that is a higher grade is going to be something that's considered a conservative purchase. Uh, other conservative purchases would be your Japanese base set Charizard again. First Charizard release, infamous artwork. This one was released in 1996. It's over 20 years old, highest possible grade, PSA 10. Another example of a conservative item that's a little bit newer but still fits in that conservative category, in my opinion, would be your Gold Star cards. So Gold Star cards, especially with higher grades, are going to be items that are very, very in demand, difficult to find. They usually have... Um, you know, a very low probability of finding them ungraded mint to gem mint on the open market. Therefore, a gold star card with a high grade, very conservative purchase. Uh, especially one like this. this is a Charizard PSA 10. Charizard is one of the most popular species, if not the most popular species to collect, and also has the highest possible grade. I probably have maybe one of these in my shop a year on average, maybe one to two, and that probably will dwindle as time goes on because these are not easily attainable. So those are examples of very cut and dry conservative items. As we go more towards the speculative uh, purchases or speculative items that you, you would buy, here's a good example of something that's in the middle. This is a sealed Chinese Legend Maker box. It is a sealed booster box. However, it's Chinese. And Chinese isn't one of the main two languages, main two being Japanese and English. Those two are the most collectible. Chinese is more of a niche within a niche. However, it's still old out of print sealed product therefore it has that demand however because it's chinese uh it's not going to have the same demand as if this were japanese and especially english if this were an english legend maker box it'd be a very very conservative purchase as it's so difficult to find anything from the original ex series down to the watsi stuff still sealed so that's a good example or a good segue into the speculative cards and here's a couple speculative purchases to show you or speculative items this is the Evolution Surfing Pikachu PSA 10, and this is the Tangela Toys R Us promo PSA 9. These were both released in 2016. This one had somewhat of a niche release, somewhat of a limited release, but it's still very easily attainable on eBay. And same goes for this card right here. This is a reprinted artwork I just discussed actually in another video. Surfing Pikachu is one of the most reprinted artworks in the hobby. However, this is graded PSA 10. That's not English, or that's not easy for an English card. But the bottom line is right now, because Evolution is still being printed, this isn't going to be an item that is conservative and won't really have a cut and dry quantifiable fleshed out valuation. This is something that will be speculative for a while. However, two to three years from now, if I'm still making videos, the complexion of Evolutions will be much different than today once Evolution is out of print. The bottom line is these are both good examples of speculative items in the hobby. And actually a good way to contrast two items that are both speculative, but one that I think will grow in value down the road would be comparing the Pikachu 20th anniversary stamp with the Tangela Toys R Us stamp. So this Pikachu card on the right, first of all, it's Pikachu. Pikachu is a very popular species, one of the most popular. 
It also has this stamp right here, the 20th anniversary stamp. I believe it was only released in the UK. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this is an attractive stamp. More specifically, it makes it a niche release or a uh, specific release. It's also great PSA 10, highest possible grade. And more specifically, as time goes on, this will become more of an artifact. It'll become more of a uh, defined moment in time. And we'll look back, let's say five years from now and be like, oh, I remember the 20th anniversary. I remember that stamp. Therefore, in my opinion, this item has a lot behind it that'll make it less speculative and more of a conservative, fleshed out, in-demand product. Or something like Tangela, not as popular as Pikachu. The Toys R Us stamp, it's doing something for it, but it's especially with the PSA 9 grade, it's not gonna have the same trajectory as this Pikachu card would. But it's a good example, nonetheless, of two items that are speculative and one, in my opinion, that will probably fare better down the road. So overall, this is the range for conservative, just a quick range of conservative to speculative items which within set cards. One thing I do wanna to touch on are the concept of trophy cards. So I have the 2014 trophy cards from the 2014 Pokemon World Championship Tournament. These were literally only awarded to the first place winner of the tournament, second place, and I have third and fourth as well. There were only six copies of these awarded, period. So from the jump off, there are only six of these awarded. And right now, there sure as shit aren't six that are available. These rarely, if ever, hit the actual open market. The point in emphasizing the difference between trophy cards and set cards is that they're in a different class of their own. They're in a different category. Within the realm of trophy cards, there is still the range of conservative to speculative. Uh, one end of the range would be 1997 Pikachus. They're literally the first ever trophy cards printed. They're now 20 years old. They're the undisputed king of the trophy card realm. They'd be one end of the spectrum where the other end would probably be more of the Japanese victory ring, victory cup, you know, the battle road type prize cards that are awarded. Uh, and to give you a better understanding of that, those battle road tournaments that are in Japan, those competitors are literally at the world championships. So the world championships were, is where it all goes down. This is the pinnacle of competition for the TCG. Therefore, something like this Pikachu trophy is more than likely going to be worth more than your comp, than your victory uh, cup or battle road trophy cards. Okay, so those are going to be more of your specul speculative cards. They won't have the same demand, price point, rarity, etc., as something like this World Championship Pikachu. More specifically, this artwork is unique to the release of only six awarded. It also has the 2014 stamp. That's imperative because this was the first year they did the full art Pikachu artwork. Usually the first year has a higher premium as seen with the 2004 Pikachus in English and definitely with the 1997 original uh, Pikachu trophy. So the bottom line is trophy cards are in a category of their own or realm of their own. However, they still have that same conservative speculative range. It's just not as fleshed out and easily as quantifiable as uh, your set cards. And a final point to give you a better understanding of that is if you look at these two side by side, this, of course, only had six copies initially, and they were awarded individually to the winners. Um, and now there's six is not a realistic number anymore. So that's what it started at, where this started at hundreds of thousands. And there's still thousands of these out there. And more specifically, you can get on eBay and probably buy one of these 50 bucks probably right now as of making this video. Um, and you could do that at your leisure. There's probably always going to be one of these on eBay. And more specifically, there's going to be a fair market value because there are multiple public sales to give you a quantifiable uh, fair market valuation for this item, where with this one, there's probably no actual public sales. And even the sales that do occur are private word of mouth, and they don't actually give you a proper fair market valuation. So this is going to be more of an estimated value. That's where a lot of the trophy cards and the very high demand exclusive rarity items will exist. They're kind of in a league of their own, and they're separate from the uh, set card hierarchy. So at the end of the day, if you can afford those type of items, I think they're the most conservative purchase, hands down. The margins of trophy cards completely eclipse any other item in the hobby. However, for most people by and large, they're gonna focus on the set cards of Watsy stuff, sealed product, gold stars, shinings, Japanese promos from the golden era, golden era being 1996, 2001. That's gonna be your conservative realm where the speculative stuff is gonna be probably the newer, newer cards within the past few years, especially items that are still in print. Maybe one final point here is if you compare the two packs next to each other, this is the original 1999 base set, and this is the 2016 Evolution pack. The artwork was supposed to echo the original, how Charizard is facing. I think they did a good job, actually, 
uh, to give English some credit. They made it echo the old a little bit, but it also is clearly new and it looks like 2016 they did a good blend where the Japanese was pretty much a carbon copy for people who wanted that they definitely delivered that but for English it's more of a nod to the old packs but these two side by side are totally different valuations this is a three to four dollar pack this is a fifty dollar pack so you could see this similar product and the differences in price point because one is more conservative and currently this one is more speculative again years from now We'll be talking about evolutions in a different light, but currently, because it's in production, it's about three four dollar pack. Okay, so hopefully that discussion really helped uh, give you a good basic understanding of items that are more conservative and items that are more speculative, and the inherent risk in buying items that are more speculative. There is opportunity because they are new items. There's opportunity for growth. There's opportunity that the valuation will change down the road, like I mentioned with the Pikachu. Uh, but by and large, conservative purchases are what you want to focus on if you are looking for uh, safe and in safe investments in the Pokemon realm. Those are going to be some examples of conservative safe purchases. At the end of the day, remember this is a hobby, and this isn't just simply pie in the sky emotional impulse. There are quantifiable reasons for why something like your Charizard Gold Star is going to be a conservative purchase because it's a very popular species. Limited release. The Gold Star theme was limited one in 72 packs, I believe, or one in three boxes, something like that. Uh, the artwork is awesome. You have a very difficult grade ability. These cards are very difficult to find in mint condition. Therefore, you have a lot of inertia and a lot of reasoning why this card is valued the way it is. So again, hopefully this helps you better understand conservative purchases and what you should buy, what you should look for when you're making a purchase versus something that's speculative and new. If you have any questions as usual, let me know. Till next time. Thank you.